the Quick Locks podcast is back, but we have two special guests today to break down all of bowl season. Mac Holman and Bo Watts. Mac, Bo, welcome to welcome to the Quick Locks crew. Thank you for having me, man. Roll Tide. Thanks, Taft. Happy so, to be here. Honored to be a, here. Let me get a little introduction. I know we we have two characters. Um, this is going to be a funny podcast, so be sure to stick around for the whole thing. We'll also post some specific clips on the Instagram and TikTok. Bo, why don't you start? Give me give me a little background of your um your betting resume and history. Um, my betting career started off very rocky. I uh, just like everyone, you know, made a ten team or five team parlay, and that was the only thing I ever did. Um, and then I learned the art of single bets, and um, that's where my best success came. My other mm. great successes have been um, live betting WNBA unders, um, which is problematic. However, it is very fruitful and is always a great way to get yourself out of a hole if you have dug yourself into one. All right. I'll, I'll take it. That's some good advice. Free advice, if you will. Free Mac. advice. Mac, you're next. Uh, well, I'm relatively new to gambling starting last year, but once I started, man, I was hooked like every gambler ever. But <laughs> uh started March Madness last year. Uh, went up big during that, kept it rolling to football season. Then I'm a big, I'm a big odds guy. I'm not a fan of the minus 100s, minus 110s. I rarely ever bet uh, the spread. I'm a big money line guy. When I my bell kind of starts ringing when I see the plus two hundred, that's when I get excited. And I also love. I like to bet small amounts that will pay off a little bit bigger. So I'm a big three to four leg parlay guy where I can put ten bucks to win like a hundred. Those my that's my sweet spot. How's that been working out for you? Uh, pretty good, I think. My single bets are the ones that have been pulling me down recently. World Cup was hitting the draws for a while in the group stage, just draw, 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 and it just ding, 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 you know. But it's been a struggle this week, but previous weeks have been pretty good. Yeah, unfortunately, I tried to tail Mac on that, and it, uh, it did not turn out well. It, yeah, so that's my bad. Well, let's hope that um, the luck changes for college football bowl games. Um, there's a reason that we're doing this podcast right now, and that's because bowl games are starting tomorrow. Um, we have two games on the bowl slate to start us off. But first, before we get into the games, what's your, tell me your favorite bowl game name, because we're going to get into all of them, but you got to just go ahead and get it off the bat. What's, what's your favorite name to say? Well, one, what really caught my eye initially was the Wasabi Fenway Bowl, which I thought was a very fascinating name for a bowl that's going to be in Fenway, but, you know, you take what you can get. Then, but my heart really goes out with uh, the Bad Boy Mowers Bowl. I used to own some Bad Boy golf carts, some mowers. I love those pieces of equipment. That's what I grew up learning how to drive on was the Bad Boy Buggy. So I got to stick with my roots and get a Bad Boy Mowers Bowl. I'm a big Bad Boy Mowers uh, pinstripe bowl fan as well. Uh, also, the Duke's Mayo Bowl, just a great heritage all around in that bowl. Dumping the mayo bucket on the the you know, Beamer last year, getting the mayo all over him was a dream come true for me as a South Carolinian uh, <laughs> that hates Clemson. So, um, yeah, the, the Duke's Mayo Bowl is probably my favorite. Let's do the first. We're going to break it up into two different podcasts. We're going to give you guys the first half of bowl games. Um, looking at the bowl slate, we're going from December 16th all the way to January 2nd. Unlimited football, really a degenerate's dream to bet on meaningless games between two random teams. What more could you ask for? We're going to split it up because Christmas Day is the only day that there's not a bowl game on through that entire span. So we're going to give you every game up until Christmas Eve, starting with the games on December 16th, the hometown Lenders Bahamas Bowl. We're going to kick off bowl season in the Bahamas with Miami, Ohio, and UAB, UAB, the Blazers are a 10 and a half point favorite over under there is 44 and a half. I'm going to give this one to you guys. Mac, please go ahead. This is, uh, you know, one of your hometown, hometown. teams. So yeah. please bring uh, it on. The 205 is representing here. I'm going to take the Blazers minus 10 and a half. I'm not completely sold on UAB necessarily covering, but I think if any team's going to cover in this, it's going to be UAB. Uh, I think they don't have a lot of players in the portal that have left. And Trent Dilfer is not coaching, but I think the effect of him 
being around the program has already made it better. And I'm just going to take uh, – I'm also going to take the over in this game, surprisingly, but I think it's going to be UAB minus two and a half and the over. I like it, Bo. I'm feeling – let's get – I want the early action. I don't know if you guys are going to be disagreeing or agreeing today. So, I, you know, I think Mac and I have always been on the same page for a long time. So I think we're going to agree a lot today, but maybe not. We'll, we'll find that out. Um, but I, I'm definitely taking the over in this game. Um, you know, Miami was bowl eligible by a one point victory over Ball State. <laughs> Just think about those words in that order. Um, UAB is going to win this game. I agree with Mac that they're going to win. I, the 10 and a half scares me because I don't know a ton about UAB, but I do know in the games that they've won this season, they have put out some serious points. Um, I think all of their wins, they've scored at least 35. So I, I see no problem with this game. Get it, the, over under is 44 and a half. I don't know if that's changed. That was as of two days ago, three days ago, but um, no problem for this game to hit 45. I think it'll hit 50 or 60. Who doesn't love betting the over on these bowl games? The first bowl game got to hammer the over just because, but also there's a reason to see that 45 is a low, low number. Yeah, I like it. All right, moving on to the later game that day. We have the Duluth trading Cure Bowl between UTSA and Troy. Um, this game is interesting. I actually got to speak with the, like, the Cure Bowl director. I don't even know what the position is for the people that run these bowls. But I met him at the Army Navy game, and he was bragging about this being the only game that has two conference champions going up against each other, like non-playoff. Obviously, UTSA won their respective conference that I'm not going to try and name, and Troy won theirs. So we got Troy minus one and a half, and the over/under is 55 and a half. Mac, you have to lead us off here because I know that Troy has a very special place in your heart. Troy minus one and a half. I know the president of the university, great guy. This is my in-state team. I drive through this town the way to visit uh, where my dad's from. This town deserves a win. They're 10 and 2, 11 and 2, coming off their first conference championship in a while under a first year head coach. John Summerall has this fan base fired up. And I think he wants to continue his season and end it on a high note with the win. I do like UTSA. They run a good offense and they spread the ball out. But I think Troy is just going to be too much to handle. And that minus one and a half, I love it. They're going to win his first bowl game. No. All so right. So we're one and one, Mac. We were we were on the same page and now we're not. So this is – I totally agree, Taft, with um, the president of the bowl, you said. Uh, this is the best matchup that is not a playoff game by far. This is wonderful matchups. These teams have two common opponents. Their margin of victories against those two common opponents is almost identical, a point or two off. This is one of the – this is the best bowl game, and it's on day one of bowl season. You have to bet it, and I'm saying you have to bet UTSA plus 106. Take the dog. It's going to go to maybe six overtimes. Either, any, either team could win, but why not just take the dog? Not happening. But the Roadrunners. The Roadrunners. Man, I'm already pumped up for this bowl <laughs> season. We got Mac and Bo going head-to-head in the Cure Bowl. What more could you ask for? Absolutely. I'm going to love keeping track of this as we go forward. <laughs> You're glad with your smart glasses. I thought you would pick smarter, hey. than that, but look smart, pick smart. <laughs> Here yeah. we go. All right. <laughs> that is day one of bowl season and we are already fired up. Now let's go to the Wasabi Fenway bowl. Awesome name. As we've mentioned, Cincinnati Louisville. This is another one that has a very tight spread Louisville one point favorite over under 41 and a half. What do we like here, gents? This is an interesting one. Well, for starters, I'm pretty sure Cincinnati poached Louisville's coach this offseason or before the bowl season started. I think that happened. Uh, so I think Louisville is going to be mad, to be honest with you. Uh, I think Louisville minus one is a lock. With these minus one games, it's basically who you think is going to win. And I think it's going to come down to Louisville's, you know, it's going to win. Yeah, right. I agree. I think Louisville's got a lot of fire under their butts coming out of the locker room for this one um, for a different reason, actually. But I do agree with that reason. Um, Louisville was in the game to get Austin Reed from Western Kentucky, who is the second highest passer by yards um, in FBS football this season. He instead of he entered the transfer portal, got an offer from Louisville. If Louisville thought they were going to get him. 
Austin Reed decides to leave the transfer portal and go back to Western Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So I think Louisville is looking for a statement to say, hey, Austin Reed, we know you're good. However, you should have come play for us. So I'll take Louisville minus one. I love the random facts that are going to make people have more locker room fuel because when you're (laughs) betting these bowl games, you need to have that locker room fuel because it can be hard to wake up for a game. It's the difference. Yeah, it's the difference, the especially difference. in the day and age where people are opting out of playing or they're in the transfer portal. You're getting a lot of guys that might not usually be playing, and they're getting a lot of nerves. And the more juice they've got, the better chance they've got of really, you know, making that final play that can put them over the top. Give me all the juice that we can get for the Louisville Cardinals. All right, we have three bowl games. Sorry, four, <laughs> five bowl games. Sit. Wait, how many games are on the 18th? Is this the same day? I'm trying to figure this out. So, this is December 17th. Okay, December 17th. We have three more. Four, I don't know. There's a whole lot of games going on today or on this 17th day. So let's keep going okay. after the. And this is in two days. Yeah, this is insane. I, I, I oh, did. Yeah. Saturday, there's going to be a lot of games on. Oh, a whole yeah. A lot of games. A whole lot of games to bet on. It's going to be like an NFL Sunday. Yeah, four, that's going to be a parlay like, for all four games. games right there. All right, well, let's start building the parlay. We already have Louisville as under our belt. Now let's go to the SRS distribution, Las Vegas Bowl. We're going to Vegas for the Florida Gators and Oregon State Beavers. And the Beavs are minus 10 and a half. No respect for the SEC here, over under 52 and a half. I think that I, spread is wild for that is wild. any SEC team playing in any bowl game should not be getting that many points. If AR-15 is playing, I am taking that 10 and a half and hammering it. These, like, I don't think – Florida does have a lot of players in the transfer portal. I will say that. One of the most out of any teams. But I think when you keep your quarterback, good things are going to happen. Florida plus 10 and a half. Give the SEC some respect. They're playing in a way harder conference. They're used to better defenses. And I don't think Oregon State's defense is going to give uh, Florida any problems. Um, yeah, I, I also don't think the Beavers are ready for that SEC ball. Um, it's plain and simple. Uh, it's just like Utah week one when they played Florida. Utah was ranked, what, like five in the nation, six in the nation, something crazy. I mean, I know they're a good team. They're ninth now, but they were not ready for Florida, who has not had the best season um, considering their program's success. Uh, I, this is an interesting mascot matchup, though, between a Gator and a Beaver. You have to think about this. Could a mm-hmm. Beaver – beat a gator could they dam up a gator hole that's what i was gonna get to you know wash out or not wash out but drain a gator's home could they climb can beavers climb trees and get away from alligators could they all them and get around them that's, that's something how, we're gonna need that's to the know only way bet this game well that's, that's i would think that the beaver out. is more clever than i would also think the gator so. however just like the florida gators the american alligator is a wildly powerful animal and if you get too close and let it bite, you're done. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think if Anthony Rich, is this Anthony Richards, is this this is gonna be his last game in college football? Are we? Is he declared for the draft yet? I thought I saw he was coming back. I'm, I'm not sure. Back. I haven't I haven't been paying attention to it close enough as I should, being someone who's an expert on the matter. But um, yeah. And I think this is also lastly, lastly, yeah, I have a lot to say about this game. Intended. This is a very interesting game. He announced Monday. Um, he's going to the draft? Yeah. He needs a statement. Why not? Ten-point spread, and this is supposed to be one of the top quarterback prospects in the NFL draft. He has to make a statement here to set himself aside from the Levises. The, I mean, he's not going to put himself ahead of Stroud or Bryce Young, but he can put his name in the basket to be in the top 15 if he puts up a big statement here and then plays well in the senior bowl um, or whatever postseason all-star game he gets to um well my last part is the las vegas bowl sponsored by srs distribution do you know what srs distribution is no a roofing supply distribution company (laughs) for the las vegas bowl why do we not have caesars the bellagio las vegas Mm. bowl might be the coolest thing i could think of missed opportunity Nah, nah. 
It's like, why is it Reliant Stadium in Las Vegas? You could have, there's a million awesome Las Vegas themed things you can name this and no one thinks about it. So that's why we have to put you in charge of naming these bowl games. One day, one day we'll get there. My concern for this game, now that we're on the whole Las Vegas topic, and this is sorry, I am taking Florida plus ten and a half. Okay, okay. all right. Took a long way to get there, but that's that was was a lot of work around. That's a lock agreement, lock agreement from you two for Florida. There we go. I'm gonna give you something to think about before you go all in on this game. Whenever a sports team visits Las Vegas, whether it's professional, college, whatever. I think it's always dangerous for the visiting team to be a little too excited. Lots of distractions. Go to the strip the night before. Go to a nightclub. Go lose all your money. Who knows? I am more worried about Florida's maybe resistance on going out in the week leading up to the game. Well, they've got – I mean, they've got – They're they're already in Las Vegas. Prospects. I'm worried about Florida and just the whole rep that that program has and how they might That's handle true. it. But this also, is, you this is also the farthest west Florida has traveled since 1989. They went Wilson. to California in 1989. They haven't been farther west. They haven't been as far as Las Vegas this century. Get to your point, Taft. I would argue that maybe uh, Florida players have slightly more fun in Gainesville and are used to those distractions than say Oregon State who I don't know where in Oregon they even are if that even uh, matters. Not you. but there's not a lot going on in Oregon so these players might those Oregon guys might get a little bit more distracted in a big city like Las Vegas you're saying Corvallis you're saying Corvallis Oregon doesn't have the same Corvallis. excitements as Sin City um, I might change my answer to that never mind <laughs> That's going to be a fun one to watch, and who knows what happens. It, we're going to lock up Florida, though, because if Mo and, if Mac and Bo are in agreement, then it's going to happen. Next up, a little better name here and a little more tailored to the actual city that it's being played in, the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl presented by Stifle. We have Washington State versus Fresno State, two West Coast teams battling, battling it out in L.A., Fresno State's getting three and a half points here as the favorite over under 54 and a half. Are we riding with Fresno? I, I, I'm i not going to ride with Fresno, but I'm also not riding with Washington State. Ooh. I'm going to ride with both of them and do the over 54 and a half. Both these, at least Washington State is putting up 30 plus in every game they've won. So has Fresno State. So I don't think two teams scoring 30 points is going to be that difficult. So I think the 54 and a half shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, I looked at it this way. I'm, I'm, I am taking Fresno money line. Um, hey, can we trust you right now with the glasses off? Well, I don't need to read. I, this is just straight from the heart. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Washington state has played some very, has a much better, a stronger schedule than Fresno state. However, they have not beaten any of the strong opponents on their schedule. Um, I just don't think that they can show up in a big game like the big game like this. Um, and also, why, sorry, Fresno State uh, is red hot. They haven't uh, lost since a four game skid early in the season. It ended October 8th. They haven't lost since October 8th. They're red hot. And um, I think they're going to win a close one. All right. Enough said there. We're going with the over and Fresno <clears throat> State. I'm going to be interested to see when the first under that is taken, um, if there even is an under at all. But I don't think that's the vibe I'm getting from these two. Moving on to the Lending Tree Bowl, Rice and Southern Miss. Six and a half is the favorite for uh, Southern Miss, over under 45 and a half. Do we have a lock here? I know we do, right? It's the Golden Eagles. The Golden Eagles, the only other school I got into or applied to besides Alabama. (laughs) Just for fun. A scholarship here, Southern Miss gave me a scholarship. Uh, Congratulations. I'm thinking them minus six or minus six and a half. Uh, Brett Favre used to play there and tore up Alabama's defense when they came to Tuscaloosa back in the day. So I'm going to stick with my Golden Eagles. Hey, they took a chance on me. I didn't take it back, but I'm going to repay them by taking my chance with the Eagles. <laughs> that's that's some really good reasoning, yeah. I know, I think that when they gave you that, acceptance they were hoping that you would bet them in this bowl game so oh for sure and their scholarship money would have been greatly appreciated full circle moment there 
for the Golden Eagles. Wow, ball. in front of the Bama ball. There, there That's you go. something there. Well, it was also behind my um, head. Yeah, but ah, uh, okay. Uh, I'm I'm gonna take Golden Eagles to cover six and a half as well. Uh, I don't need my glasses again because I, Rice is terrible at football. I just I don't I I didn't even look at anything in this game. Rice is awful at sports, especially football. Um, I can never ever pick them in football. I won't ever do it in my entire life. I don't care who they're playing. Um, and speaking of Brett Favre, I do think that um, you know Southern Miss hasn't been great this year, but I think that they can uh, you know steal a six a seven point victory, um, you know, against Rice. Yeah, that's fair. I like the lock agreement. Whenever there is a lock agreement on this podcast, we are going to absolutely lock it up. So we're going to do it there. Um, next up on this awesome day of bowl games, we have the New Mexico Bowl between SMU and BYU. Is this intentional that there are two three-letter um, abbreviations? I don't think it is. SMU is getting five and a half points here, over under 64 and a half, two firepower offenses. What are we locking up? I'm going to do BYU to cover. Uh, it's SMU's first bowl game. Their coach just left and went to the crosstown rival TCU. And you've seen how just how good of a coach Sonny Dykes is. So I don't think we should take for granted their first bowl game appearance without that experienced coach. And I think BYU's had more continuity at the head coaching spot in recent years. So I'm going to do BYU, maybe even BYU money line. I'm taking the over. Um, this is a firepowered offensive matchup. Um, SMU's Rashi Rice is in position to get to 100 receptions on the season. He's at 1,300 something yards on the season, um, and he's got 10 touchdowns. Uh, BYU has Christopher Brooks at running back. He averages 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Last time I checked, that's all right, you know, maybe. Um, and he's averaged 8.1 in his last three games. He's red hot with the rock in his hand um and these defenses are not great they've had terrible seasons um they have they've held teams they've they've both held five teams to less than 25 points this season uh those teams are north texas lamar university both teams held south florida to under 25 baylor which was an anomaly uh and wyoming uh and in addition BYU's defensive captain Keenan Pilly has entered the draft portal and a couple more DBs from BYU are in the portal and will not be playing this game. Mm, interesting. Let's so we're gonna do a little parlay there, obviously, because Mac and Bo have trust in each other. Um, so there's that one. Now let's go to the sixth and final bowl game on this awesome December 18th day where there's gonna be nothing to do except for sit on your couch and bet on these bowl games. That's the Frisco Bowl between North Texas and Boise State. Boise State is getting 10 and a half points here, over under 57 and a half. Who's riding with the Broncos? I yeah, I'm going to be riding with the Broncos. I'm pretty sure There North we go. Texas, I'm pretty sure North Texas just fired their coach if I'm not mistaken. So, yep. I think Boise State to cover the spread. I also just love the city of Frisco, Texas. I've driven through there. It's a beautiful little city, about 200,000 people. So great atmosphere for a bowl game. The people of Frisco are going to be showing up and showing out. Uh, so I'm going to go to Boise State to cover. Yeah, I will too. Uh, and that's for the reason that their coach just got – the North Texas coach just got fired. And the North Texas quarterback does not take care of the ball. He's got 20 uh, – their offense has 20 turnovers and a minus five turnover margin. So their defense has done a little bit of work to try to get back what their offense is giving away. But at the end of the day, when you've got 20 turnovers on your offense on the season, you're not going to win many games. I don't know how they're even bowl eligible. Um, and Boise also has a solid defense, and they run the love, they love to run the ball. So this is – you know we're getting into the recipe of a blowout. Um, which you never want to see in a bowl game. You always want to see a close game, but I think this one's not going to be close. Boise State's going to blow them out. And one more point. This is special to me. This bowl game is sponsored by – it's not it doesn't have a name sponsor, but it's presented by Tropical Smoothie Cafe, mm. which is one of my favorite spots when I'm in between meals and need to pick me up. The Mocha Madness Smoothie is always calling my name. Nothing better than a good old Tropical Smoothie Cafe. I bet that those football players are going to be having a lot of – smoothies 
in the week leading up to that game. Great way to get some nutrition. Great way to get nutrition. And they're going to be juiced up for sure. I'm going to go back to what you said. You never want to see a blowout in a bowl game unless you're betting the favorite minus 10 and right. a half. So now, well, we do want to see a blowout in this game. We, we kind of do. We kind of do. And they'll they'll get their – North Texas, they'll <clears throat> cry over their coach being gone, but they'll drink their smoothies and they'll be okay knowing that we are making money because of their failure. Moving on to December 19th, a very special day for this podcast, Bo's birthday. Bo, go ahead and take this one. I'm just going to let you introduce the bowl and everything. The Myrtle Beach Bowl, baby. <laughs> on my birthday? Are you kidding me? It's perfect. It was written in the stars, Taff. And you know what? I guess who's playing? Marshall against UConn. UConn used to be a basketball. They're a women's basketball school. <laughs> They're not a football school. Get that out of here. I mean, what? They had like two good prospects back in the day, and one of them was like Byron Jones. Anyways, he's not even on the Cowboys anymore. Gone under the bridge. Marshall is important to me. My sister got married last weekend. You know what her brand, uh, congratulations, Catherine, love you, and <laughs> love her husband, Marshall. So we're taking Marshall 10 and a half. Wow. I'm I also like going to be, I'm taking Marshall everything. Former Bama coach, Marshall Huff, used to coach Bama running backs, is the head coach there at Marshall. He's got the key to the herd, and they've already knocked off Notre Dame. Sorry, Davis. They knocked off – Knocked off Notre Dame. No reason they can't knock off. Who are they playing in this? UConn. Oh, give me a break. Marshall minus <laughs> everything. Marshall money line. Just hammer Marshall. It doesn't even matter who they're playing. It's Marshall, baby. We're riding. I am a little upset that it wasn't like a worth. Like on my birthday, if it had been, you know, some more local or like better teams, I would have totally gone to this game to see that beautiful teal field. And like Brooks Stadium or something up there in Conway, South Carolina, which isn't even Myrtle Beach, but it's the only football stadium that can hold 20,000 people in the area. Um, but yeah, and yeah, back to your point, UConn's an independent in football. And Marshall beat the king of independence, supposedly, in Notre Dame. So I think that this is just, this is not going to be close. They both like to run the ball, um, but Marshall's better at it. Full and I think point. Marshall can blend in with the field too. That's my last point. I think if Marshall wears green, that teal field, they're going to blend in, and that could bring in another element of how they're going to get to eleven points. Oh wow, yeah, that's something people aren't talking about. I don't think Vegas has considered that yet. I don't believe so. So let's go ahead and. But that's why you watch that. Quick Locks. Where that's why you watch Quick Locks wherever you are right now. It doesn't matter if it's December 19th and you're celebrating Bo's birthday or not. You should take this 10 and a half right now before Vegas finds out about the color scheme match between the field and Marshall's uniforms. It could be game over. It could be wraps. They might just call this bowl game. A, like a, They might just say, hey, UConn, you have to forfeit because you have absolutely no chance. So go ahead and take Marshall minus 10 and a half, the thundering herd while you can. Happy birthday, Bo. Thank you. If you're just now joining us, we are in Bowl Mania season. I am joined by Mac Holman and Bo Watts, just two bowl experts, and we have fully dived into these bowl games. We're doing this in two parts. We're doing the first half of bowl season before Christmas, before Christmas Day, and then the second half after Christmas. So we have seven left in this first half of bowl season, and we're going to – go to one of the most all-time classic bowl games you could have. That is the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Eastern Michigan and San Jose, San Jose State have the honor of playing in this historic bowl game this year. San Jose State, three-and-a-half point favorites, over-under 54-and-a-half. We've been riding overs this pod so far. Are we going to change it up here? Uh, oh, are we going to change it up? Yeah. Well, I'm going to change it up personally, just starting my notes. I have Idaho bowl, no comment. Uh, I think this bowl is just as boring as the state of Idaho. Ooh. I'm going to stay out of it until I hear, I don't want to make an enemy out of, for out of the state of Idaho for quick locks, but I'm not a fan of Idaho or the bowl, but I'll let Bo take this one. and I'll follow up. I'm taking the under. Um Wow. This is just going to be a boring game. The most exciting thing about this game will be the blue field. That's it. There's nothing else exciting about this game. 
Um, it is the battle of mid. I've heard some people saying this is the worst matchup of bowl season. I am not saying that out of respect for the famous Idaho potato bowl, but I've heard some people saying, that. I mean, I'll, I'll go out and say right now, I think this is the worst bowl matchup there is this season. Well, there we did. We just spit all over the Idaho potato bowl, but Idaho, that's okay. we're sorry, deeply sorry from quick locks, but I don't Send think there's anything back well, in this one. Off there's field. there's really nothing to get excited about except they're playing on a blue field. Yeah, but should show you best, the, be, not even the best colored field of this bowl season. No, teal has the number one spot. I mean, it's got to show you something where the only place they can play this bowl game in the state of Idaho is a Boise State's field. Not really a football state, but you know, mm. it's whatever. Well, boy, I mean, Boise State's had some some history. The under's a perfect – yeah, Boise State has some. Has some. Brian Harson, Kellen Moore, are the Cowboys' current uh, offensive coordinator that I hate with passion. When I think Boise State, I just think about the Statue of Liberty and Hook and Ladder that they ran in that BCS National Championship game. Pretty epic. Very epic. All right, we've said enough. We've spent too much time on the – we, We've now. spent way too much time on this bowl. Yeah, so let's, let's go ahead. We're taking the under – the roofclaim.com Boca Raton Bowl mm. with Liberty and Toledo. Two perfect teams to play in the Boca Raton Bowl, in my opinion. Toledo minus four and a half mm. over under 53 and a half. Are we going to ride with the favorite here now that Hugh Freeze is, is gone? I'm doing the, uh, I'm going to take the Liberty Sober Eagles money line. Um, I think they have more talent in general. And I don't think Hugh Freeze is that good of a coach, so I don't think they're going to miss him at all. Thank you, Auburn, for hiring Hugh Freeze. Give me Liberty money line. That's all you got to say. I'm I'm going the opposite direction. I'm taking Toledo to cover four and a half. Wow, um, big difference there. N- neither of these teams are taking care of the ball this season. Um, but Freeze has left Liberty, which is uh, a benefit Liberty is- for Liberty. Well, they, well, I mean, probably they've hired Coastal Carolina's coach. Um, so that is, a, I believe, it. We have, Mac and I are on the same page. That's a step up. But you have to believe most of these Liberty players are not going to be on the Liberty team next season. So I don't feel like they're playing for much. Um, I like that. Yeah. I, I just think Toledo, Toledo's held on their head coach. And they always seem to be fun to bet on. So I'm taking Toledo to cover. I like that. I'm going to break the tie here inside of Bo and – Toledo, what's their mascot? I feel like it's something cool. Uh, it's not the Rockets, but it, they have like a it, rocket somewhere. Oh wait, it, it's like they they have like a Rocket Man, like as like their little logo. Toledo mascot. Well, Rocky. Rocky. That's it's a rocket. Rocky the Rocket. Toledo Rockets, and his name's Rocky the Rocket. That is the Rockets. I'm a genius. Oh, yeah, that's... didn't even know it. But will they beat the Cyber Eagles? I think a rocket beats a sober eagle. Although know. most eagles are sober. But it's a Christian but, sober eagle, so. You know. They are the flames, too. I think they have that. Oh, group. is Liberty the flames? Did I mess that up? Yeah, I don't know where you're getting yeah. from. Yeah. The sober <laughs> flames. That's pretty lame. <laughs> oh, well. For that reason, Not we really. are taking rocket. They're, the rocket. They're like four and a half. Dress up mascot as an eagle, I think. That's where I got it. I think so. All right, now we got the R. Is it R plus L, R and L? I don't know. It's I think it's R and L. It's it's the. Uh, I looked it up. It's the CEO. Of the company's initials are R L. Oh, that's so selfish of that CEO. Yep. He's Anyways, also- it's the New Orleans Bowl. We're not even going to give that sponsor credit. West no, because Kentucky. it's an Ohio. It's literally it's an Ohio based freight company <laughs> on the New Orleans Bowl. Like, could we do the Zaps Voodoo Chip Bowl? That would be amazing. That'd be good. Maybe like the Bourbon Street Blackouts Bowl. The Bourbon Street Blackout Bowl. The Hand Grenade Bowl. <laughs> I was just in New Orleans a month and like a month and a half ago. It was a wonderful time. The fact that their bowl is sponsored by a freight company from Ohio is very sad. Missed opportunity once again. Anyways, we have Western Kentucky and South Alabama. Not much to really get up for here, except for the fact that you can bet it. So we have South Ooh. Alabama minus four and a half over mm-hmm. under 55 and a half. Who's going to take the underdog here? Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers. No. 
Me. Absolutely. I say as soon as you hear me say these words, book it. Book it, book it, book it. It's The odds are they're in a swing. I promise you, before the game happens, Western Kentucky will not be the underdog. They were the underdog when it opened because their quarterback was in the portal. He has now flip-flopped and broken the space-time continuum and the laws of metaphysics and portaled in and portaled back to Western Kentucky. He's got to prove he was right. Just like I said, Louisville's got to prove they were right. He's got to prove he was right. And they didn't just break all these physics laws for nothing. That's a I'm lot of portal have... entry and exits. I'm going to completely disagree. I'm yeah. going to stick with my home state team. Alabama is a football state. Kentucky is a basketball state. South oh. Alabama minus four and a half. This is a 10 and two team that was one loss away from making the Sun Belt Championship versus a talent. They, I think their only loss might have been to Troy in the conference. Uh, I'm taking South Alabama minus four and a half. They want to prove that they belonged in that Sun Belt Championship. And I'm, I'm taking the South Alabama Jaguars. Go Mobile. Go Jags. Jags over the Hilltoppers. We have a lock dispute. In what could be a cool sponsored bowl game, but it's not. Anyways, we're over that. Not really. We got a couple more left in this first half of bowl season. So let's go ahead. We're on December 22nd now. At this point, if you're following this podcast and betting the prior games, you're probably a rich man because we have some smart cookies on this podcast breaking down these games. We have on December 22nd, where you have, once again, nothing to be doing except for sitting on your couch and betting on Baylor versus Air Force in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl, the Air Force Academy, they're five and a half point underdogs, and the over under for this one is 49 and a half. Are we going to take a service academy over the Baylor Bears? Uh, no, Taft, I might actually pull this one out. We just talked about this earlier. This, this oh, might be no. Matt Holman's lock. Wow, um, you did it. I'm going to do lock it in, literally and physically lock in. Baylor minus – Five and a half. I think the talent gap between Baylor, who was a very good team last year and still has a lot of that talent back, versus the Air Force Academy, which I think probably is the worst out of the three service academies in football. Ooh. Oh. You don't think so? They beat Navy yeah. this year. They beat yeah, they, they beat wrong. Navy. Yeah, just like, wrong. Not I, I don't care. I'm gonna I think <laughs> uh I'm doing they don't Baylor play in the Army Navy games, so therefore they're worse. Uh they did the Army Navy. Baylor game. minus five and a half, absolute lock. Coaching gap, also love Dave Aranda. Coaching gap is just too wide, just like the talent gap. Hey, you can only bring that lock out once a pod. So, all right, he's using it. I'm t- I'm taking Baylor money line. I don't really love this game in any line form. I think Air Force has the talent to keep it close. I don't think they have the talent to win it. So I'm going to take Baylor minus 220. I don't know what it's at now, but it's somewhere around the 200 range. Um, It's a good parlay addition if you're looking to just add a leg that's going to hit. It's a safe play. Um, But this game, interestingly enough, is in Fort Worth um, at Amon G. Carter Stadium, Baylor's biggest rival. And that means that Baylor fans have traveled there routinely every other year um so i think it's going to be a big home crowd for baylor this is going to be basically this probably will be the biggest home field advantage of any bowl game um and the baylor fans love to show up show out and i think the crowd noise is they're just going to win this game it, uh, air force can make it close but they're not going to have the momentum to win the game bear down lock it up now let's go over to the radiance technologies independence bowl between Louisiana Lafayette and Houston. Houston, the Cougars, minus six and a half, and the over-under is pretty high for this one, 58 and a half. Mm. Who's taking the Cougs? Mm. Oh, lock agreement. Six and a half all the way. Uh, I think Houston's going to throw for a million yards in this game. Um, UL Lafayette lost to Rice. So I'm required to fade them. They're gonna they're, they're just gonna lose this game by 90 points. There, there's no way they score 10 points. I will say, um, that, that's 
made up, but you know, I do think that Houston will for sure cover six and a half. Uh, no trouble. Yeah, uh, Houston, they they have a great passing offense, and I, there's no way if you lose to Rice, you keep up with Houston's pass offense. Completely agree with Bo here. I'm doing Houston to cover, and then the Raging Cajuns lost their coach last year, moved to Florida. I think that's going to show. First year coach going to be nervous coaching his first bowl game against Houston. So. And don't doesn't Houston have West Virginia's old coach? Is he still at Houston? Holgerson? If he is, he was a Mike Leach coaching tree descendant. Ah. So he's gonna to want to win this one for his former uh head coach. So I'm gonna I'm sticking with Houston. Yeah, that's a great that's a great um plug there, Mac. Holgerson's still at Houston, so yeah. There you go. All right, I like it. We're right, we're squad riding Houston. That's one of those games you don't want to see any blowouts. In bowl season, but when you're but when you're betting the Cougs minus six and a half, give us a sixty to zero blowout and give us the over while you're at it. Yeah, I mean the only way I watch that game is if it's close in the second half. Yeah. But I do think that it won't be. Union home mortgage Gasparilla Bowl is going to be coming on right after that one between Wake Forest and Mizzou over in Kansas City. This is a good one. Wake is minus one and a half. Favorite ACC favorite over the SEC that might be a factor here over under 60 and a half. What do we like as much as it pains me to bet on an ACC team over an SEC team? I'm doing Wake Forest everything, and I'm gonna take. I don't think Mizzou, I mean, they've beaten some good teams and they competed with some good teams in the SEC, but I think they've lost a couple key players to the portal which does not help them at all. And I think Sam Hartman's last game is going to want to yep. show up and show out. I'm going to do Wake Forest to cover Wake Forest money line. Maybe even the over if Sam Hartman wants to throw as many touchdowns as he wants. You just don't know. But I'm taking Wake Forest in every category. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Sam Hartman's last last game for Wake Forest. And this is his last season for them has not been a great one. He's had much better seasons in, in the past. Um, and I think he wants to go out with a bang. In addition to that, Mizzou has lost their top wide receiver, uh, Dominic Lavette. He is transferring away, so he will not be in the game. As well as two defensive backs that played key roles for the Tigers. So I don't think that they're going to be able to stop Sam Hartman when he wants to hum that thing around. Yeah. It's a good matchup. But both teams just suck. Yeah, that's that's fair. Mm-hmm. That's, that, that's one of those toss ups, and that's why the line is so low. I don't think Vegas knows what's going to go on either. But that has brought us to the last bowl game of this podcast. The first half of bowl season will end in Hawaii. Manikalikimaka is a thing to say on a bright Hawaii. Christmas Day. The Easy Point Hawaii Bowl on December 24th. We have a showdown between Middle Tennessee State and San Diego State. The Aztecs minus six and a half over under 49 and a half. What a what a matchup to celebrate. Cut Christmas. the music, Taft. Cut the music. I'm over it. <laughs> that was all I that was all I had on me. This is a terrible game. This is the worst bowl matchup this season. I, I, I'm happy to dance along to Malika Likimaka, but this game sucks. I will not be even thinking about it on Christmas Eve because I will be thinking about the Cowboys and the Eagles playing at 4:30. But it, the Cowboys could, which be the Eagles will be one in twenty this season. Watching. I'm sorry, I said the Eagles are going to win that game, but sorry to interrupt okay. you. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I the Cowboys could be out of playoff contention already, and I wouldn't even think about this game. Um, it's just horrible. Middle Tennessee is playing in the Hawaii Bowl. Why? Um, they both suck. I, it, speaking of Easy Post, I was working one day, and I got a telemarketing call from Easy Post. It mm. was one of the worst experiences of my entire <laughs> life. Horrible, <laughs> horrible salesman. And just didn't want to take a no. I was trying to be a nice guy and just have a little back and forth. And just, you know, be a decent human being. But I wasn't, we're not getting easy post. Um, I, I, it's probably the worst phone call I've had. I've had news delivered to me about deaths. I've had breakups over the phone. It was the worst phone call of my life. 
<laughs> um, I'm taking the under for this game because everything about it sucks. Uh, I'm sure San Diego State will win. I'm a I'm a kind of an Aztec fan, but I'm not going to bet them to cover the spread, or I'm not even going to the 265 is there's no value in that. Um, I I just can't get excited about the Christmas in Hawaii gimmick because this matchup is awful. Hey, um, Ohana means family, and I feel like Bo's family to me, so I'm going to agree with Bo here. I'm taking the under. Ohana means family, Meliki Maka, whatever you want to say, this game is not nearly as exciting as it was listening to that song. As much as I love the show Hawaii Five O, I hate uh, this easy post Hawaii Bowl. Let's just do the under. Play the Hawaii Five O. But uh Yeah, yeah I mean be just the under. bet the under and get a UPS account and keep track of your shipping yourself. It's not that hard. <laughs> I can't even dance. Can't even dance to it anymore. Middle Tennessee State, you ruined it. You ruined it, it for us. Easy but post. It was never easy. It's a good, it is a good it stopping point. Tennessee it's State. a good stopping point. It is a good stopping point because, because I'm upset and I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, I got angry and I don't think this podcast would be any more fun if we kept going after that. I think that that's going to have to call it for today. I think when we, re- when we reconvene on Christmas Day, we will all be in bright and cheery spirits, and I can't wait to see both of you then. Because and the easy post bowl will be behind us. It will be over. And my it will be over. my uh, little sprinkle NFL lock, after what mm-hmm. Micah Parsons said about my boy Jalen Hurts, lock in the Eagles, money line spread, do it. You, you won't regret it. Give me the, the lock click for satisfaction. Uh, I don't even – I think it's been locked. Yeah. Oh, it looked open to me. Never mind. No, all that's right. open. Yeah, it is open. Uh oh. Uh, is that a sign for how Ma- is that a sign for how Max locks are going to go down? Oh no! I, I hope not because we've given plenty Boom. of points for your bolster. Ah, there we go. There Locked, it is. Loaded, but I got to keep my hand on it because it's a key and I don't know where the key is. Lock it in. We got plenty of locks for you guys to watch out for the next few days. So enjoy the first half of bowl season, and we'll see you again on the second side of it. Until then, let's make some money.